Hi guys, let's look at KCSE 2023 predictor. Today we shall be looking at paper one. In my previous session, I did paper uh, two and I will still be doing paper two in series two. So guys, distinguish between optical scanners and magnetic ink scanners. That is our question one A. Remember in section A, we have 40 marks. Then question number B, we have the automated input technique where a king of input data is originated, is sometimes referred to as. So uh, we have our marking scheme guys here. So we have uh, to have this part here. So guys, we have that uh, distinguish between optical scanners and magnetic ink scanners. So when you talk about optical scanners, they capture data using optical or right technology, where magnetic ink scanners is used to capture data written using magnetic ink or coded onto a magnetic strip. Then we have part B. We have talking about the automated input technique where king uh, of uh, king of script data is designed is sometimes referred to as data capture or key to storage. Then we have distinguish between, uh, let's just go to the question paper. We have explain the difference between digital and analog signal in data communication. So guys, here we just go to our marking scheme where we have analog signal is made up of continuous varying waveform while digital signal is made up of non-continuous or discrete waveform. So the difference here is continuous and non-continuous. That is the key term, that analog is continuous and um, digital is non-continuous or discrete. Then we have part B of our question, guys. We have give two ways in which computers are used in communication industry. We have two marks. Then we have question number three, name two special purpose memories found either inside or outside the microprocessor. We have two marks. Then distinguish between an accumulator and an address register. So guys, we just go to our answers. So we have that um, message transmission and reception is very fast and efficient. We have telephone exchange relies on computers to switch incoming outgoing mails. Uh, we have airtime industry. Computers are heavily used in air traffic control and surveillance of airspace using radar equipment as well as for reservation purpose. Then we have question number three. We are asked to explain the or to give, actually to give uh, special memories found inside or outside the Microprocessor. So we have the cache memory that speeds up the processing or fetch cycle. We have the buffer. It acts as interface between very fast processor and slow input and output devices. Actually, buffer is a memory found inside the output devices like printer or even other input devices. So when you send a signal, the buffer reserves the signal and then transmits. So you have the registers. Registers are special memories that temporarily hold data instructions just before and after processing. Then we have the accumulator. Accumulator is a register that holds the results of the uh, last processing step of the arithmetic and logic unit temporarily, where address register temporarily holds next piece of data waiting to be processed. Guys, Remember, you can get copies of the marking scheme and this paper from my website. The URL or the website address is just below this uh, video. Then, guys, we have the next part, question number four. Define, define the following terms as used in disk management. We have formatting, one mark, partitioning. You go to the second page, we have disk compression or compressing. You also have disk defragmentation or disk defragmenting. So guys, part B of the question is distinguish between multitasking and multi-user operating system. 
So guys, we proceed to our marking scheme. We have question number four, where formatting is creating tracks and sectors on a disk. Or rather, it is the process of preparing a new disk for use by improving equally empty sectors and tracks on the surface of the disk so that the operating system can recognize and make it accessible. Guys, when you talk about formatting, uh, you are just preparing a new disk to hold the data. You can simply say that. Then we have disk partitioning. Disk partitioning is subdividing a disk into logical drives. For example, uh, once you buy a hard disk, it is labeled drive C, so you might uh, use a software to subdivide it so that you can have drive D, drive E, etc. And then you can use it for uh, backup purposes and also if you, in case you want to install more than one operating system. Then we have disk compression. This is creating more space. How do you create this space? You, it reduces the amount of space uh, data occupy on a drive. Compressing is done to decrease or decreases the amount of space used by all the files and folders stored on the disk. Then we have disk defragmentation. To fragment is to separate. To defragment is to bring together. So defragmentation is bringing together scattered uh, or non-contagious files to increase the space or just to free the space. Actually, it is to free the space. Then we have multitasking. Differentiate between multitasking and multi-user. So this is form one topic operating system. Multitasking allows a single CPU to execute what appears to be more than one application or programs apparently at the same time. So when you talk about a task and then multitasking, a task is single, multi means many. Then you have multi-user. <coughs> Sorry for that. Multi-user uh, just means that uh, the CPU allows more than one user to interactively use the computer. This can be done through server client model. Then we have question number five, guys. Uh, what does question number five read? Give two importance of internet. Then the next question, explain the following terms as they are used in the internet. Sign in, serve, downloading. So guys, we uh, got that question and answer it. So we have question number five. So. Uh, it is widely used in research, that is the importance of the internet, news and information dissemination, ratio and communication, and also a place to do business, that is e-commerce. So internet has so much that uh, you can do it. Then we have differentiate between now the other terms, we have sign in or login. When we, we sign in, you are accessing an account. When you sign out, you are leaving an account. The same as login and logout. Then we have surf. To surf is to browse or go through the internet. Then downloading is transferring information from a, a remote computer to a local storage. Like for example, guys, if you go to YouTube and then you download a video to see it later, okay, or when you go to YouTube and access a video, you get that video to watch it later, that is downloading. Then we also have uploading. If uh, I just like I have done this video, the way it reaches you, I have uploaded. So I have transferred it from a local computer to a remote computer. Then we have question number six, guys. We have defined desktop publishing or DTP. Question B, explain one purpose of desktop publishing. So guys, what is DTP? We can just try to uh, figure out that one, what is DTP. So what is DTP? DTP or desktop publishing is the process of creating publications like cards, newspapers, etc. or even textbooks. Then we have two types of DTP. We classify DTP into two. We have graphical design and page route design. When you talk about graphical design, uh, this is, these are DTPs that are used to do graphics like Photoshop, Corel Draw. But when you talk about page layout design, 
these are DTP that are used to just come up with simple pages like Adobe Page Maker and Microsoft Publisher. Then guys, we proceed to question number seven, differentiate between source program or source code and object code or object program in programming. Guys, this is a very important paper. When you go through it, uh, through it guys, you'll be in a position to get an A in KCC. So this, is, this question comes from Form 3 topic called Elementary Programming Principles. So differentiate between a source program and an object program. So guys, we just go to our answer. A source program refers to the program code that the programmer enters in the program editor window that is not yet translated into machine readable form. Then we have the object code. That means it is a translated source program. Or rather, it refers to a program code that is in machine readable form. Guys, that is in form 3. Then we proceed to the next question, guys. That is question C. Uh, state the stages of system development. So when you talk about the uh, stages of system development, we start by looking at the problem recognition. We have information gathering. We have system uh, coding, system, that is system, then system construction. We have system design, system construction, system implementation, etc. Then we have this convert 126 to hexadecimal. So that one, you can just look at how it is done. You just divide that one by uh, by eight, and then you get the answer as shown. Then you have question number nine. Question number nine, guys, we have explain one paragraph formatting feature. Uh, okay, I will not really explain one, but uh, we shall look at the marking scheme and see many. So we have to go to question number nine. So we have arrangement, we have indentation or indenting, we have section breaks, bullets and numbering, we have columns, we also have line spacing, those are examples of paragraph, we also have drop caps. So guys, remember to download a copy of this marking scheme for more scrutiny. So we go to question number 10. What is information system? B. Give two roles of information manager. Guys, this question comes from uh, Form 3, a topic called system uh, development, that is uh, system development, a topic after elementary programming principles. So what is an information system? Give two roles of information uh, system manager or information manager. So guys, as in IS or information system, it's an arrangement of people data processing and information that work together to support and improve the day-to-day -day operations in business and helps in decision-making process. Then what are the uh, roles of information manager? We have reviewing the existing system, uh, making recommendations on how to improve, also working hard in hand with the programmer, coordinating training. You can also talk about budgeting of the uh, information uh, that is technology department and also recruitment of the staff. He's involved in recruitment of the staff. Then we have state two types of database models. We have one mark that is formed to a topic called databases. So guys, we proceed. We have flat model. We have network model, hierarchy, Relation and also we have OOP or object oriented models. These are the upcoming uh, database models. Then, guys, we proceed to question number 12. Give one advantage of an electronic spreadsheet over traditional analysis ledger sheet. So, in the market scheme, you don't expect to have one advantage because advantages are so many. So, what are the advantages of a spreadsheet? So, it's faster in data processing accurate and efficient in accomplishing tasks. It offers larger virtual sheet for data entry and manipulation. Electronic spreadsheet have better document formatting capabilities. It has inbuilt formula and functions. Automatically adjusts the results of the formula. That is called formula, automatic formula recalculating ability. 
Then you have, it enables the user to produce network. It utilizes large storage space on a computer, storage devices to save and retrieve, uh, uh, that is, uh, documents. You can also add, it beautifies your work. You can give different cells, different colors or out of format. We proceed to question number 13. Define the term data security. Question number 14, explain one type of transcription error in data processing. Guys, in question number 13, data security is a topic in form two called data security and control. So we are being asked to define the term data security. Basically, data security is preventing data from threats. We have viruses or unauthorized access, cracking and hacking, such. Explain one type of transcription error. So we proceeded to our marking scheme, guys. We have misreading errors. We have transposition, uh, transposition error. So when you talk about transposition errors, instead of writing 469, you write 496. Misreading errors is whereby instead of reading something like 276, you write 27B. Then, guys, we proceed to our question 15. Question 15 reads, outline stages of data correction. This is form three, second topic, data processing. So is, we are being asked to outline three stages of data uh, corrections. Guys, these are the stages. We have data creation, we have data transmission, we have data preparation, we have media conversion, we have write validation, and also we have, uh, we have, we can just remove this one. And just remove this part, just call it validation. Then we have sorting. Then, guys, we proceed to the part that um, is very important. We proceed to section B. The instruction in section B is answer question 16 and any other three questions from this section. Guys, you must answer question 16. If you skip it, then you will be deducted 15 months from the total. So you have Kenya Women Finance Trust, KWFT, pays 10% interest in shares exceeding on 50K and 4% on shares that do not meet this target. However, no interest is paid on deposits in the member's uh, bank account. So design a pseudocode for a program that would, would Prompt the user for shares and deposits of a particular member. Calculate the interest and total shares uh, savings. Display the interest and total savings. Display the interest and total savings in the, in the screen for a particular member of the trust fund. So, pseudocode is seven marks. Guys, you can pause the video and screenshot or screen, uh, print screen the, the question paper. So uh, we, if we go to our market scheme, guys, this is the answer. So we have start, print, enter member name, comma, share. Then we have and the deposit. The tick and one, that means one mark. Input name, share, deposit. If share is greater than 150K, then interest is 10% of the shares. Else, interest is 4% of the shares. And if... If you use if, you must use and if. Then from there we have the total savings equals to deposit plus shares plus interest. Then you print the name, total savings and the interest. Guys, that is the uh, marking scheme of the pseudocode. You can pause the video to have a glance on it. Then we have the flowchart. This is the flowchart of the uh, of the pre, uh, previous pseudocode. So we have start, input name, shares, and deposit. Then we have is shares uh, greater than 150K? No. Then the interest equals to 4% of the shares. Yes. Then the interest is 10% of the shares. Then it calculates the total savings, which is deposit plus shares plus interest. Then it prints them and the program stops. That is the pseudocode for that matter. Then we have question number 17, guys. We have defined data integrity. This is form three, second topic, data processing. Give three ways in which one would curb threat to data integrity. 
Then we have explained the following electronic data processing modes, giving relevant examples where they are used. We have real-time processing. We have distributed data processing. We also have give three components of computer-based information system. We also have, uh, the next one is computer hardware is categorized according to the types of operation it performs. List three, uh, list three operations. Guys, this is question number 17, which is very crucial. So data integrity refers to the accuracy and completeness of data entered into a computer or uh, received from information system. So how do you curb threats to data integrity? We have backup. Uh, remember, we have three types of backups, incremental backup, partial backup, and full backup. Some of the things are not in the syllabus, but the examiner will ask you. Just like the examiner will ask you types of maintenance, and we don't have them in the textbooks. So we have backup, especially on external storage media, uh, control access to data by enforcing security measures like password or encryption or firewalls, design user interfaces that minimize chances uh, of invalid data entry, uh, that is data validation and verification, using error detection and correction software when transmitting data, also using devices that directly capture data from the source, just like a camera. When you take somebody's photo straight, it is accurate rather than taking it from a textbook or from a magazine or newspaper. Then we have part C. Part C reads explain the following. We have real-time processing. We have distributed processing. So guys, when we talk about real-time and distributed, the computer processing incoming data as soon as it occurs, updates the, uh, the transaction. This one should be transaction, guys transaction, sorry for that, files, and gives the immediate response that would affect uh, the, the uh, that would affect the action. The main purpose of real-time processing is to provide accurate up-to-date information. So then we have an example is booking. Uh, you can book an aircraft, you can book a hotel. Then we have distributed processing. This refers to dividing uh, processing tasks to two or more computers that are located on physically separate sites but connect. You can talk about something like an ATM. When you have an ATM, uh, the ATMs are connected to the headquarters, but you can withdraw money from Isioro County, Kisumu County, wherever you are, but that data resides in Nairobi, that is in the headquarters. Then we talk about the hardware. The next question asks about the hardware. Give three components, okay, we are here. Give three components of a computer-based information system. So we have the answers. We have the input or the hardware. We have processing or the software. We have memory, that is data stroke information. We also have output or procedures. We also have storage or communication. Then we go to the next question, guys. Computer hardware is categorized according to the types of operation it performs. There is these three operations. So we have input, processing, output, storage. These are the answers. Basically, we are asking about the, that is about the, those functions we run in Form 1. Then, study the diagram below and answer the question that follows. Guys, uh, definitely this is Form 4. Uh, first topic, networking and data communication. So name the above cable as used in data communication media. Name the parts A, B, C, D. So guys, these are the answers from our marking scheme. So we have, this is coaxial cable. Part A is the copper core. Part B is the core insulation. Part C is the aluminum foil. Part D is the braided shielding. So those are the parts of uh, coaxial cable. Then guys, we proceed to the next part of the question. We have highlight any three advantages of the above cable. So what are the advantages of coaxial cable? Remember, if you don't identify the, the cable, definitely you are wrong from the other question because how can you identify a donkey and it was a cattle? So that one is 
done. So we have, it has a large bandwidth. Bandwidth is the amount of data or voice that can be carried. They are very stable, even at the high roads. Those are the two main advantages of that. Then we go to part B. What is UPS or an interruptible power supply unit? Explain two functions of UPS. This is topic number one in form one, introduction to computers. So here is where we learn about computer laboratory. So what is an UPS and what are the two functions of the UPS? So UPS is a device that protects the computer from being, being damaged due to power instabilities. UPS charges when main power is on and has power surge and burnout protection capabilities. Functions of UPS, it regulates power from unstable power source. It temporarily provides power to the computer in the case of sudden power failure. And also you can add that it, it alerts the user when power goes off through beeps. Then we have part C. Give two advantages of sound outputs. This is second topic of form one, computer systems. Give two advantages of sound output devices. Then, why are CD-ROM and CDR referred to as WOM? Remember, we have WOM in virus and WOM in CD technology. So, give two advantages of sound output devices. Guys, we have that um, it enables reception of output even when a few meters away from the computer. It makes computing interesting and entertaining. Then also, it can be used by handicapped people to enter data into the computer. Then we have WOM. WOM means write once, read many, or write once, read more. So it decode once, but can be accessed many times without changing the contents. So the essence is that the data captured can be accessed many times without changing the content. Then guys, we have question number 19. Question number 19 is that uh, information and communication technology is relatively a new area of study which is advancing due to this reason. Everyone is expected to keep abreast with the changing trend of information and communication technology, that is ICT. So the question is, explain how ICT has affected employment. Guys, this is a very good question. So how has ICT affected employment? So guys, uh, we have that uh, ICT has uh, created new jobs, that is job creation. It has introduced jobs like software engineers, computer engineers, computer teachers. Those jobs were not there. It has also resorted to job displacement. An employee is moved to another department where computer skills are not required if he or she is illiterate, computer illiterate. <clears throat> Sorry. Then you have job replacement. Computer illiterate people have been replaced with those who uh, have the desired skills. Also, you can talk about uh, people being replaced by robots. Then we proceed to the next question. That question comes from Form 4, a topic called um, Effects of ICT. Explain to here are the problems that have resulted from prolonged use of computers. So we have that one, that is a very crucial point. So we have RSI, that is repetitive strain injuries. They are injuries starting from wrist, hard arm and muscle strain, tendons and neck strain. You can also talk about eye strain. Oh, sorry, it's actually the next answer. We have eye strain and headache. You can also talk about lumbago, that is backache. Then we proceed to a very important upcoming issue, I AI, that is artificial intelligence. A question from artificial intelligence must be set. Even if it's not there, it should be set according to me because this is a challenging and uh, emerging issue, artificial intelligence. What is artificial neural network? This is a branch of uh, artificial intelligence. Remember, we have natural language processing, we have robotics, and also we have expert system. So guys, also uh, try to look at the other branches of uh, AI, that is artificial intelligence. So what is artificial neural networks? Give two features, attributes, 
of neural networks. So guys, we go to our answer. Artificial neural network is the use of electronic devices and software to simulate the neurological structure of human brain. The idea is to try and emulate the cognitive learning process of human brain and how it recognizes patterns. Human brain works by receiving signals from a special sensory cells called neurons. When neurons receive information, they exit the cell to send the signal to the brain. Guys, don't talk about the side of the biology, but talk about the side of AI. That is the first sentence. Then, uh, the next question is that... Um, uh, give two features or attributes of neural networks. So these are the features. Uh, we have the neurons. That is, the neurons can be trained to, to distinguish between what constitutes a signal and what does not. Number two, they are capable of recognizing patterns in large amounts of data that are too complex for human brain. So guys, this is just a matter of revising. Remember in paper one, you have to read. The secret is read read, 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 until the end of the day. So we have the next question, guys, in uh, this is from system development in form three, that is the last topic. Explain characteristics of a system, that is holistic thinking and system entropy. When you talk about holistic thinking, this means that the viewer of the system or whoever views the system should view the system as a whole. That is, uh, even if it has parts, you just try to see no parts, but see the system as a whole. It is actually whole, holistic thinking. System entropy means that the system uh, degrades or system loses uh, importance. It uh, uh, decays, the system decays as time goes by. That means the system must be upgraded. So what does the marking scheme say, guys, is that holistic thinking is a characteristics of a system where a system is considered as a whole. Full stop, don't give stories. System entropy, it is a decay of the system. That is enough. The system loses value as time goes by. That's why we need something called patching, that is uh, updating the system. Guys, our last question is distinguish between, between a system analyst and a programmer. This can be taken to form three and also can be taken to form for a topic called careers in ICT. So, what is the difference between system analyst and a programmer? These two types of job opportunities that are available in the field of computer hardware. So guys, you just go and look at that. So, a system analyst is mostly responsible for analyzing the weaknesses of the system and designing an alternative uh, solution, whereas a programmer writes the computer programs. Simple and clear. So we have two basic careers in computer hardware, that is computer engineer, that is computer, we, we can talk about computer technician and computer engineer, or computer repair and maintenance if it's the career, and computer assembling. Then we have part B. Part B is that highlight any two factors you would consider before enrolling for an ICT course in the college. Give to disadvantage, okay, let's deal with this one. Which are the factors that you can uh, try to, uh, to check? Number one is the cost of the course, job opportunities, whether the examination offered are recognized. Like for example, you can just go and do an exam that is not recognized by Kenya National Examination Council. That means you'll be wasting your time. Then we have part C. Part C is that give two disadvantages of observation when used in fact finding, can you assume you are observing people? If they realize you are observing them, then they are trying to pretend. They may pretend and also uh, give false information. But let's see what the marking scheme says. Um, the person to be observed might alter behavior, leading to wrong requirements, being observed. That is true. It need you to be on the site, not to send any other person like questionnaires. Then we have this part, very crucial, very examinable. Explain the following changeover strategies. A changeover strategy is the method that will be used to bring the new system and discard the old system, just like we are doing in CBC and 844. So we have parallel changeover, we have phased changeover, we also have pilot changeover that is not in the question paper. So read about changeover. So, 
what is the difference between the changeover? So we have the, the parallel changeover. The old system is run together with the uh, old system. That is, the new system is run together with the old system until the employees are comfortable with the new system. Then the old system is withdrawn. Phase changeover is the way we are doing in CBC. A new system is implemented in phases or stages, e.g. an education system. I don't need to explain more than that. You know what is happening in CBC. Then explain the following data security measures. We have firewalls. We have uh, data encryption. Uh, we also have the ROG files. So what are the, the what does these terms uh, these terms really stand for. We have firewalls, we have data encryption, we have sabotage. These ones are all related to Form 2 topic called data security and control. So firewalls, it is a device or a software that filters data and information exchanged between, simply just say that a firewall is a hardware or a software that filters malicious data. Then you have data encryption. This is mixing data in such a way that only the sender and the recipient can understand. We use something called encrypting and decrypting keys, fungo. Then we have the sabotage. This one should be missed, uh, typo. We have a sabotage. Sabotage is uh, illegal destruction. It is illegal destruction of data or hardware. Like for example, if you just hold on the CPU and then you destroy it, that is sabotage. That is an illegal destruction. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Also remember to check what is new. We'll be doing series two of paper one and series two of paper two predictors of 2023 KCC. Thank you very much.